Emmaus, is believed to be the most popular, the most loved of all the post-resurrection appearances. There is mention of it in Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 16 and verses 12 and 13. But only in the Gospel according to Luke is there a detailed record of it. As the two walked toward Emmaus in the late afternoon of the day of resurrection, it was apparent that they were sad they were crestfallen and they were gripped by the spirit of despair over Jesus' crucifixion. They had regarded Jesus as a great prophet and because he had impressed them by the wonderful things he had done, they had grown to believe that he was the Messiah who would deliver them from the grip of the Romans. Their hope that this Messiah would indeed redeem Israel had been dashed because the Jews, as scripture says, had handed him over to the Romans who then had crucified him. It was then the third day since Jesus' crucifixion. And for them, nothing really significant had happened. It had been reported that a few women had encountered angels in the empty tomb who had told them that Jesus was indeed alive. In verse 24 of our gospel passage, we have these words. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But Jesus they did not see. These two were in a confused state and could not get their heads around this puzzling issue. So they made for Emmaus, a village seven miles away from the city, Jerusalem. Most of us tend to repair to our own symbolic villages when the going gets rough. But our symbolic cities are where we must remain and struggle to survive. We must remain in those cities and believe in the God who answers prayers. We must also discover often the tenuous communities that are in these cities. In the city, many of our dreams, many of our hopes can be shattered. And when that does happen, we head out for Emmaus to start all over again. We go there to lick our wounds. We repair to our Emmaus to gather our forces. Where are we this morning? Are we struggling to survive in the city? Or are we on our way to the comfortable Emmaus? Soldiers of Christ must struggle. They must fight the demons. They cannot recoil. They cannot withdraw from the battle. But do you know that if we do decide to withdraw to the seeming comfort of our Emmaus, on the way, a stranger will meet us. That stranger is willing to help us if we let him. And that is exactly what happened to the two on their way to Emmaus. When Jesus came, and walked alongside them, he realized that their eye of faith had to be opened. So he prompted them to talk more about what they had been discussing. Jesus always 
always wants us to share our problems with him. It was not that Jesus was ignorant of the contents of their discussion, but he wanted them to open up to him. We know that letting out our doubts, our fears, our hopes can be therapeutic. For what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. As the two opened up to Jesus, that presented him with the opportunity to expound on the scriptures. Jesus carried the two through the scriptures in a systematic way, book by book, showing them how God's purpose was fulfilled in the death of the Messiah. But then, the Messiah did have to suffer before he entered his glory. <coughs> One of the issues these two grappled with was that of the suffering Messiah. They were so caught up with the world's concept of power, of military might for her leaders, that the fact of a Messiah suffering and being crucified on a cross made no sense to them. Jesus underscored the fact of suffering. When in verse 26 of Luke chapter 24, he said, did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Friends, no cross, no crown. It is rather unfortunate that even some of our leaders, our religious leaders, lead people to believe that suffering is not part of the believer's work through this life. John 16 tells us that Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. It is not you may have tribulation. It is you will have tribulation. So friends, there are bound to be times of suffering, times of trial, times of age. But we should not be afraid if we hold on to Christ who overcame them all. Verse 24, 27 of Luke 24 tells us that beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. We need to hear, we need to study God's word in its entirety. A number of us take verses and passages of the scriptures out of context and so lose out on the full import of that which God is saying to us. Jesus went through the scriptures book by book, folio by folio, and expounded on what was in the scriptures. Jesus was such an effective teacher that as they neared their destination, the two invited him in for they sought to hear more from Jesus. Friends, Jesus does not intrude. He does not force his presence on us. He courteously waits to be invited in. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. Jesus would have gone on further, for he never enters a life or a home without a personal invitation. If the two had let him go on, the likelihood is that they would never have known that it was Jesus that was walking beside them. <laughs>